Hey everyone, it is motorcycle time out here in the shop tonight. Now, a few weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, I replaced the stock headlight in my DRZ400 with this LED replacement headlight that I bought from Amazon. Now I did a video on that where I designed and 3D printed an ABS bracket to hold the light in place and kind of did a side-by-side -side comparison between the stock light and the new one. And I've also had the opportunity to ride the bike a little bit at night with the new headlight. I can tell you with 100% certainty that with the low beam, the new headlight illuminates things around the bike way better than the factory one did. Uh, the high beam, however, I would say is probably pretty comparable to what it illuminates out at a long distance with the high beam. So definitely an improvement, but I would really like to do better. So uh, my plan always was to purchase a Morimoto sealed beam headlight. Now I know that there are some aftermarket companies that make bracket kits for the DRZ. However, um, I was able to purchase the light directly from Morimoto uh, a couple of weeks before Christmas. They had a pretty good sale, so I got it for 180 bucks. Um, 180 bucks is pretty cheap for a Morimoto headlight. Uh, still like six times the cost of the uh, cheap ones you can buy off of Amazon or eBay. Is it gonna be six times better? Probably not. Um, but I'm hoping it's gonna be significantly better, so. Yeah, so this is the so this is the headlight I'm running now. Uh, I'm actually going to fire this up, point it at the shop wall behind us, and I'm also going to uh, light the Morimoto light with uh, a power supply. And that way you can see the way that the beams are between the cheap LED light and the more expensive Morimoto one. So I've got the Morimoto kind of propped up and temporarily wired here. There's our low beam. There's our high beam. Low beam. High beam. Let's compare that with the DRZ's headlight on here. DRZ's low beam, Morimoto low beam, DRZ's high beam, Morimoto's high beam. Now I realize I'm not actually taking any measurements of anything. We're just firing up the lights and shining them on the wall and deciding which one looks better. But I can tell you that the Low beams on both lights are pretty similar. The Morimoto's cutoff definitely favors vehicles that drive on the right-hand side of the road. You can actually see that the cutoff is stepped down to the left side, which should help with uh, avoiding blinding oncoming drivers. But there is no comparing the high beams. The Morimoto's is so much brighter. So I'm certain this is gonna be a good upgrade. Is it worth the extra, you know, 150 bucks? I don't know, that's up to you. I guess in my mind is, if I could prove that having better lighting avoided an accident, it's worth every penny. <laughs> is there other options? Sure. I could put some aftermarket uh, LED pod lights on there, but uh, definitely not legal to do that. Uh, this Morimoto lights DOT approved. Uh, not really that much money since I can design my own bracket. It costs like half as much as the commercially available solutions. So that's what we're going to do. So when I got the Morimoto light in the mail, I immediately realized that the back of this was curved and completely different than the cheap Amazon light that I had previously designed a bracket for. And this has no mounting holes in it. So I've already got this bracket mounted to the Morimoto light. I designed this in Fusion 360. And basically what it does, it's a halo that slides over the top of the heat sink on the back of the Morimoto headlight and covers the four diagonal uh, kind of stiffening braces that are in the back. I uh, 3D printed some holes in the corners and then ran a drill bit through the aluminum back housing fins, uh, those little stiffening ribs. So it doesn't uh, perforate the, like the in inner housing. So it's, there's no risk that it's actually gonna let any moisture or anything in. But then I ran some screws through those and uh, tightened them down with some captive nuts on the uh, outside. It's actually a really strong bracket. I did print it in ABS, so uh, it'll be resistant to temperature swings and things like that. Um, well, let's get out the screwdriver, pull that housing off, and uh, see if my measurements work for this bracket here. I've had this bracket in here for a couple of months now, and it has worked just fine. Uh, I've had no issues with it. It's plenty strong. 
Um, the light doesn't bounce or wobble around or anything. It's actually worked really good. I'll probably throw this thing up for sale and it'll be a good inexpensive upgrade for somebody else. Is a tight fit. All right, well. Last night after I got done installing the headlight in the DRZ, I went inside, I sat down, and uh, I just thought about it and I thought, you know, I don't like the fact that I had to wedge that headlight bezel into place. I, I feel like, yeah, I could do better. Really all I needed to do is recess that light about a half an inch. Not that difficult of a change in CAD, so I sat down in Fusion, uh, moved the holes, and then I decided to kind of strengthen the bracket a little bit, and I printed out another one in ABS last night. So we're back out here in the shop today, 10 hours later and we're gonna remove the uh, the headlight put the new bracket on and uh, and reinstall it and see if that helps with the fitment at all oh so here's the new bracket that I made obviously you can see how it kind of slips over the stiffening ribs in the headlight and then I added these kind of curved wings on the side to uh, stiffen up the mounting points a little bit I think the old one was plenty strong I don't think it would have failed or anything but um, you know this method's stronger, why not make it stronger? So let's pull this thing off and uh, install the headlight again. Just so good, I love it. All right, the new bracket's bolted into place. We'll uh, pop this thing in the bike and see if that uh, additional half inch of uh, uh, movement toward the back kind of frees things up. Okay, I like that fit a lot more. That that's perfect. It's brought the uh, headlight back to, uh, you know, just behind the surface here, which is right about where the factory one was, and uh, there was no problem with uh, putting this bezel into place. Yeah, so that wraps this headlight project up. Got a couple of more bike projects coming up that uh, I'm going to be uh, installing a USB-C power supply and a couple other little things like that for uh, for accessories. So uh, stay tuned if you like that kind of stuff. I'll be uploading some more videos soon. Thanks again for watching.